I had a best friend about five years ago, um, beyond that. And, oh, I mean, even to this day, I miss her and we were such great friends, but at that time, that's what we both needed. And I noticed that the reason the relationship ended uh, five years ago was because it became a one-sided relationship. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer, being joined by Carrie. We love doing this and we love you guys. Hi, Carrie. Hello, everybody. And this, I, I say this every week. In fact, I just today listened to our this week's podcast, Christy. I did too. And I, and at the beginning of it, I said, this is a great topic. But I, so I, I want to think of something else to say because I keep saying that every time. We, it is a good topic. I don't know how we think of these good topics like this, you know, and some of them are really my favorite. Some of them not so much, but man, I am so excited about this one. Cause I'm just loaded for bear. I mean, I'm really, I am really fired up about, about this week's podcast and it's called, you call them friends. There was a hint to this in today's release of the podcast because as soon as I listened to our recording I went oh that's right that's what we're going to record about today <laughs> yeah and it's really good timing because uh you can't mm, I tell you well, let, let's just get let, let's okay. just get started here with let's you call them it. friends you got to say it like that you call them friends yep. but that <laughs> is just truly this is a real serious problem I am so shocked at the amount of people who are friends with people who are toxic or who are not very nice, who are not supportive, who are kind of mean, who, who do this little kind of nagging that tear them down. I mean, I'm so shocked that people put up with this baloney. I'm always amazed at what people allow other people to do to them. Now I have been a person that has allowed people to do things to me. We've talked about that many times on this podcast. And of course, you know, it's insidious. And then all of a sudden you're like, what, why am I allowing that? Like, why am I a victim? Like, well, how did this happen? But especially where these friends are concerned, it's almost like some of you think that these people are your only options. Huh? Like, this is not your only option in life. There are a lot of people out there. The same could be true of picking a, a bad life partner. It's yeah. not your only option. You, you ain't got to stick with the guy that, that, you know, knocked you up in high school. Sorry, sorry. I don't mean that mean, but it's like, it's, it's, I get it. Well, trust me, I am not judging. Uh, my picker is broken as well, but these are not your only options. And that's kind of what I want everyone to know today. I had a best friend about five years ago, um, beyond that. And, oh, I mean, even to this day, I miss her and we were such great friends, but at that time, that's what we both needed. And I noticed that the reason the relationship ended, uh, five years ago was because it became a one-sided relationship and it became to where I, I seem to be putting all the effort out to it into doing things and talking and communicating and, and contacting her and, it just, it, I just refused to do that. Other things in our life took priority over me. And I, I, my confidence is good enough to where I just said, you know, this is just not the way that I think this friendship should go where I am the only one doing all the work. Right. And I remember being shocked when you kind of ended that friendship. Did you talk to that person about it? Yeah, I did. The problem is when, um, her kids really started to, um, take a lot of her energy and it was all about her kids. And I, that, and so you can't really say that to somebody, you know, like, well, I tell you kids are top priority. Yeah, I get it. You got to take care of your kids and stuff. But when they, 
she, it, it crowded out every other area of, area of her life. And she was so into her kids that there was just no time for anything else. So when it comes to people's kids, I've learned being a, a, a childless person, you can't say anything about people's kids and you can't say anything about their parenting. Like, hey, listen, your kids are really crowding out every area of your life, including our friendship. And I'm I really feel like I'm getting leftovers. Like, how do you say that to somebody? That's a really hard one. That is super hard. And I, I never knew I had to ask. I never knew, but I have seen there are definitely, there's definitely a way to strike a balance, an appropriate balance to where you can still have friendships and, and take good care of your kids. And the problem is, uh, this is a different podcast, but that people then don't even take care of themselves. And I think that's kind of what you saw with this person as well. But you're my friend as well as my sister. And you, right. you have, you, I find that you're a great mom, but you, oh. I don't ever see your parenting crowd into our relationships, right? right. Our that's relationship. Because, that's because I've been a mom forever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I have figured out that like, I love my kids. I'm also not looking to be my kids as best friends. Like I want to be close to you. I want to have a relationship, but if you think we're friends, like now with my adult children, we're friends, but I'm not friends with my 11 year old. I'm the mom. Now am I friendly? Do I love you? Am I committed to raising you? Right? Yes. But we ain't friends, child. You got to listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> I have a different know. perspective. I'm kind of an old school mom. Yeah. But it's really been nice. Cause I just don't ever notice like I, cause I've been, I've gone to, I've gone to dinner with, and I've eaten with, with, um, other couples and they have their kids there. And the conversation is a hundred percent. The kids are talking and adults don't get to talk and you right. would never allow your kids to do that. No, no, no. I know. I know. We're going to be getting some angry comments about that one, Christy. Yeah, I know. It. Gen Z parenting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, I have a, I have a couple of things I want to go through. Cause this is a, this is a gray area of, well, it's, it's like, what do you, what, you know, how do I, how do I know? And we want to give you practical scenarios and uh, practical situations. I know you all have been in where we can kind of outline what would be a friend that you wouldn't want to have. And what would, what, what would a, a good friend say? One that you do want to keep around uh, one that would, one you need to get rid of, what would they say to this? And when you want to keep, what would they say to this? So okay. I have a couple of, uh, you know, I have a couple of examples, but what we want you to, we want you to kind of look, you know, it, are you being bullied by this friend? Uh, we talked about toxic relationships. Are you tolerating toxicity? You don't even have to be, it doesn't even have to be that toxic. You know, it doesn't have to be like, wildly toxic for it to not be good for you. It doesn't have to be like, well, you look fat. I don't like your husband. It doesn't have to be that kind of stuff. It could be a really insidious thing to where you're like, why are you mad that I'm getting healthy, but mad at you? So I'm sure Chrissy's going to go through it. I'm excited. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, we know that we know that bully that we know that there are friends that kind of bully you and they push you around a little bit. And, um, uh, Boy, that's that's a red flag right there. Um, are you not setting clear boundaries? Boundaries, uh, really, it all boils down to boundaries when it comes to friendships and even relationships with your mother-in-law, relationship with your pastor's wife, relationships with different people in your life. It all boils down to boundaries, which I hope that you'll see at the end of this podcast how to set clear boundaries. But I think a lot of people, they're not setting and they're not adhering to clear boundaries. Do you think it is because sis that they just have never been shown what a good boundary system is? Because I did not understand about protecting my sleep until you and I, until I got my Fitbit. Um, and we talked about what that was going to look like for me. I, I mean, I wonder if it's just that simple. They haven't been, they haven't seen it. Maybe they haven't been shown, but I tend to believe that it's a lack of confidence when you don't oh. have confidence in yourself and your methods and your program and your, your situation, you tend to cave really easily. I didn't think about the confidence thing. That totally makes sense. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, uh, you could be like, I'm a strong, confident woman, but then every time someone wants to go out for pie and coffee after church. Okay. Okay. Well now you're having pie and coffee at eight 30 at night and you're getting bed at 11. And like, it, this is a clear, this is a clear crumbling of boundaries here. So 
I think having confidence, I tell you, nobody, nobody tests my boundaries. Mm. I am such a, I, I am and I, to, almost to a fault, but I just, you know, like when I was at your house here recently, you said, I know you got to go to bed, sis. And I said, no, you know, I'm actually, I want to stay up a little longer and talk to you. So that was my decision. And I totally was aware of what I was doing. I knew it was going to cut in on my sleep an hour, but I wanted to, and I made that decision myself. So I don't know, but I'm an extremely confident person. So, and I, I don't, but I tend to kind of, I tend to kind of think that a lack of confidence makes you really cave on your boundaries. And I wonder if it's just the ability to, and you may get into this later, it, redefine relationships, what they've been surrounded by, and then where you are now, you know, but I think that bottom line in any kind of relationship, you have to have boundaries. So a good friendship respects the boundaries. Your friend, your good friend should respect your boundaries. Absolutely. We had a code red coach named Shelly and she said, she would always say, I'm laughing because it's awkward to even say we need to have, she would say, you know, she was very stoic and not a lot of facial expressions. She's an at attorney. All. And she, she was what? She's an attorney. Yeah. She's an attorney. And she said, we need to have a conversation of expectation. And it was always so awkward when she said it. It was like, okay, but she was right. Like a conversation of expectation. She had this like low voice, you know, and it was very, very stoic, you know? So it was always kind of an awkward thing, but sometimes you gotta like, it, it doesn't have to be awkward, but maybe a conversation of expectation would be good. Yeah, I think that's excellent. And I used to love when Chili would say that. But I yeah. think also, like, for instance, uh, today at the time of this recording was Anne Marie's first day of school. So yesterday, we had an expectation conversation. And, uh, you know, she ended up getting upset and crying because she wanted to negotiate the expectations. But it was Anne Marie, you have to be up at 530. So your phone is going off at this time. I need your room clean before tomorrow. I need you to please set out your clothes and everything you need because at 5.30 in the morning, you're not going to want to do that. And she's just like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. You know, I mean, crying and whatever, but it's just, it was an expectation conversation. So I think sometimes even those are hard conversations to have, you have to say to friends, I'm, I'm just going to use weight loss as an example, but you know, I, I'm on this journey to take my life back. And that means I can't do taco Tuesday at 8 30 PM. I can do a lunch with you guys and just know that I'm going to have a taco salad and I'm going to drink water. And if that's okay with you, that's what we can do. Same thing. If you're trying to work on your relationship with your significant other, you have to say, you know, you have to respect my Saturday nights or my Tuesday evenings. I'm going to be with my significant other. This is what we're going to be doing. Well, come on. You don't need it. You got to have someone that respects those you know, those rules that you put up and you have to be able to talk to you. Like Christy and I have had things come up and I've said, this is kind of what I would like. And she's like, oh my gosh, totally. Or she says, nope, like I'm headed to bed or we're going to be doing this. And I I'm fine with that. And I have an expectation conversation every single morning with my husband. And, and I say, <laughs> this is what I'm doing today. I love this it. Is what and I do. And I, and it's just, a, you can call it, call it kind of what you want. You can do the Shelly thing, or you can make it a little more casual, but I line out exactly what I'm looking at, how my day is going. And Carrie, when you come to my house, it's never for fun. It's always for business, but we have fun, but we, have we fun. always, every morning I line out to you, but you communicate so well with me. I communicate so well with you. And right. I said, this is how the day is going to go. We need to roll out of here at 9 30 AM. And you know, and then we're going to come back and then let's rest a little bit. And then we've got to be online to be this. And then we've got to be here. And then we've got to be at the venue and we always line everything out. And then you'll say, oh, well, I need a little more time to do my hair. So can we, can we adjust that time to this? And it's, it's two parties figuring out what their own expectations right. are. So it doesn't have to be weird, but it, it's, it just needs to take place or you guys are going to be all over the map. Yep. Sergeant major would call it a briefing. <laughs> We're going to have an 0600 briefing. Yes. We're going to have a zero, excuse me, 0600 because we're not Marines. We don't say, oh, he says, but we're oh, going to have a 0600 briefing about our day. Let's get it straight. What are we doing today? <laughs> yeah. That way everybody's on the same page. So why, if you are, if you are allowing people to bully you, if you are tolerating toxicity, if you're not setting and not adhering to clear boundaries, why are you doing this? Are you afraid? And I've got notes here. That's why I'm glancing down. I, I did this for myself ahead of time. Are you afraid that 
you will not have any friends. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of losing your friends and not getting new friends? I'm wondering, because my question is, well, why would you want to have friends like that anyway? Right. Right. I think that you need to, not you, but we need to talk about quality over quantity. I would rather have one good friend who understands me and respects my journey and I respect their journey than 10 good friends who don't get it, but, oh my God, there's so much fun when we go drinking. Like what it's, so I think a quality, like I don't have a lot of close friends, uh, but I have a quality close friend in Christy, or I have a quality close friend, but I don't have 50 friends, 50 girlfriends. Um, and so I really think the quality over quantity is something that you really need to look into when you look at your friend group. When I see online a couple of people, a couple of girls that I follow, and they go on these girls trips, I mean, there are 11 girls. I don't there get are it like nine freaking girl and they're all in Tulum. You know how to me, you know how hard it would be to, for me to find 11 people that I line up with that are always on time, that pay their own way, that don't start drama, that all work out. Like, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to drink. I mean, they can drink if they want, but I'm not going to stay out late. Like we all, we all respect our bodies enough to get good sleep and, and that don't, you know, talk too loud. Like, I mean, it would be so hard for me to find 11 girls to go on a girl's trip to Tulum, Mexico. And like, I just go, how do you do that? So I'm with you hundred percent. I couldn't do the like girl's trip. I, you know, Marley, I've done a trip with her. I can, I can travel with Jade for, you know, with no problems. I can travel with you hundred percent easy. Like it's so easy. We can pick you know, a few so of the coaches. I don't know. I don't know how we would, how we would, how we would come up with a handful of people. I don't know. I know. I don't understand this when I see this online. So uh, why would you want to be a, 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 with friends who don't, who, who treat you that way? Uh, this might be why you continue to tolerate this behavior. You're afraid of not having friends, but you need to understand that you'll make new friends who will line up with your new way of life. You have to find a community. This is why the rebel community is so important. And again, I don't care what community you're a part of. If it's the, you know, the breast strokers of America and you all go and swim every day. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Quilting. Like, I don't care. Whatever yes. group it is, you are going to find a group of people that line up with what you want in your life. And you have to go there and put yourself out and seek friends in that group. And it's time to think about maybe one or two really good book club friends instead of 50 friends that were from your old work. Yeah, it's going to be hard to find friends that match every area of your life. That's going to be, right. that's okay. But if you do love to read books or if you do both own a motorcycle and you, you're part of a motorcycle club or a Corvette club or you guys all quilt together, you know, on Tuesdays of every week, you know, or if you guys all love to go pass out tracks, Jesus tracks on the corner, but you know, like it, it's, it's, it's great to have something in common. Don't expect someone to line up with everything. Like she don't do CrossFit. Well, but you guys like to quilt together, you know, like it's so it, yeah. that would, that would be good to seek out friends in those uh, common things that you love. I agree. So, what can you expect from a true friend? All right. You can expect positive energy. Yes. You can expect not filling your head with gossip. God, I don't, I do not. I don't tolerate that at all. I don't want to hear gossip about someone else like that. That is just like that. Don't that don't put don't bring that on me. You know, yeah. are you the same way, sis? It doesn't really serve any good purpose. Every time I come from a come away from a conversation where we talked about somebody to try to get the inside scoop. I mean, sometimes it work. Christy and I will discuss certain people so we can you know, get a handle on how we're going to deal with it as a team. But, um, we just don't sit around and talk about people. And what's interesting is every time I come away from those kinds of conversations, I don't feel better about myself. Oh, I really don't. So it doesn't do any good to stalk your ex on Facebook for 45 minutes or his, his current girlfriend or your, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't feel like it it really, it, you, in the moment you may feel better gossiping or it's interesting, but in the end, it really doesn't get you very far. 
And actually, I've got a great example of a bad friend. So here's what a bad friend, I'm sorry to say the word bad, but uh, you know, a, a bad friend yes. would say to you, this is a sentence a bad friend would say to you, okay? Did you see your ex's new girlfriend? She's got such a great body and that hair. I heard they had sex in a church parking lot. <laughs> that would be a nasty thing to say. Why? What? Yeah. What? What good would that even serve for a bad friend to even bring that up and, and say that crap to you? It's not going to help. A good friend would not ever mention this. Like, just don't even mention it. Don't bring it up. Don't bring that bad energy in. I completely agree with you 100%. And there have been times when I need to talk. Like, let's just say you need to talk about your ex-husband's new girlfriend. That's sure. okay. Like, we get like, it. Process And it. then I think it's, yeah, to process it. And I will say to Christy something like, okay, I'm just going to complain about X, Y, and Z. And I don't need you to solve it. I'm just going to complain for a few minutes and then I'm going to feel better. And then I'll complain and she'll say, oh, or I understand. And then that's the end of it. That's all I needed. I didn't need anybody to say, well, his wife has beautiful hair or, oh my gosh, you know, she's making a ton of money at her job. Like none of that. Like I, I don't need that. I just need to process it. So it's okay to process, but not somebody that's going to bring toxicity or more stress into your life. You don't need that. Yeah, you really don't need that. And it, and I know with Carrie and I, if we do talk about something that's going on in, in our family or in our in the in Code Red, we talk about it, but we don't bring it up again. We don't bring it up over and over and over because neither of us have got the bandwidth Ugh. to handle that. We are both we are both maxed out and we can't take on more. And so what good is that going to do to fill your head with that and then have it going around and around your head? Well, I should have said that. Well, I'll tell you what, like we, we talk about it. We get it done. You know, we get a fair bit, uh, you know, not as much as you would think, but we get a fair bit of people that are upset with code red, you know, and upset with something, the way that something handled it. Usually it's the way I said something, you know, and, and, Carrie handles it. She might tell me she might not. A lot of times I don't want to know and she just handles it and I don't want to know. Uh, and if you just keep bringing that up and up and up, it, it really can eat it. You can, it can eat your lunch. And so we make a point to not continue to bring it up. We bring it up, we take care of it and then it's done. It's closed and we don't bring it up again. Agreed. hundred percent. So a good friend is always going to support you hundred yep. percent. So here's what you might say to your friend. Okay. I'd really like to go back to college. A crappy friend is going to say, why you suck at classes. Don't even bother with that. But a good friend, an awesome friend is going to say, if anyone can do it, you can. I've watched you do some incredible things. Oh, so my, this reminds me, Christy, is that my adult daughter, Courtney has been here and she has, she, I don't think she would mind me saying that she struggled with anxiety in the past. And so she's kind of learned how to deal with it. She does a great job. So this whole week I'd be like, oh shoot, I need to make a U-turn. And she would reach over and put her hand on me and go, mom, I support you. I'm <laughs> here for you. What do you need? And every time she sees me, I'll be cooking in the kitchen. Mom, what do you need? What can I do to support you? And it's funny because I'm really independent and I don't need a lot of that, but at some point, and I, I appreciate it, but at some point in her life, that has been key to her getting moving forward. And so she's picked up on that. So I I'll say, okay, you know, like one, one of the chickens died and she'll immediately put her hand on my shoulder and say, what can I do for you? How can I support you? You need a friend like that. You need a friend that picks up that you're struggling, that gets that you're having a hard time and says, what can I do for you in this moment? Or yes, college is a great idea. Let's talk about how it's going to work with you and the kids. Or what have you thought about studying? Let's talk about it. Yeah. I have a friend, Jen Luddington, and uh, she's, she's been my friend for uh, almost 12 years. We've been through thick and thin together. And I just was talking to her yesterday and I know that she uses this phrase all the time. How can I support you in this? Yeah. How can I support you in this? And uh, it's just so funny. You know, she spoke at code red live 2019 uh, and we go hiking together and, and she's got a couple of, she's funny. Cause she's much, uh, 
she is much better at the way she says things than I am. And um, she'll go, like she said, we're having a retreat. I'm have I'm hosting a retreat in Sarasota, Florida or something, you know? And I was like, oh, can I come and speak? And and she was like, oh, I think it would be a better match if you were uh, on our podcast. And I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. I get it, Jen. She's just, you know, Christy, it wouldn't be a good match for you to come and speak at this retreat, you know? And I could, I, oh. and she just, and she loves me. I didn't take offense to that, but it's just funny how, but she always says that, how can I support you? And, and anything I would ever, Ever asked she would do for me so it's a really important that you pay attention to how your so-called friend is reacting to you when you spring an idea about going back to college at 52 years old that might seem crazy nobody you know and that's the thing about mom mom has never called me crazy mom's been listening to my dreams well forever and my yes. dreams of owning an Arabian horse ranch when I was little and my dreams of, you know, my dreams of, of owning a gym. And she was like, you could do this, Christy Lynn, you know, and then she would sit there when I first released my very first uh, order of T-shirts, you know, for Code Red T-shirts. She was at one o'clock in the morning bag bagging them up and, and writing handwriting labels and putting a stamp on it because we didn't have a printer back then. And uh, that's just and she's always said, that's a great idea, honey. And she probably thought I was just crazy as crazy could be but she never said she never ever cut me down do you have a friend that takes little jabs at you like that how are they reacting to when you bring up your your hopes and dreams it's very telling and i i want one more thing i want to mention about that and when you talk about mom that reminded me is that you don't have to agree with every crazy idea they have yeah that's okay but if you say something if your friend says something like let's talk this out let's talk this out. Like, let, yep. Let's just explore this. Not like hey, everything's fabulous. Not like that. But mom has always brought Christy and I, I would say, mom, I'm thinking about going back to school and I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to go be an MMA fighter. I'm joking. Obviously a very bad idea for me. Um, and then Christy would say, Christy or mom, hey, let's talk this out. Are you ready to commit to that level of training? Are you ready to potentially break your face and your nose that you put all that money into? You know, I mean, it's just saying like, let's talk this out. So you don't have to agree with everything that your friend says or your loved one, but it's being willing to just discuss it with them. And I think here recently, Carrie, you um, had the idea of becoming an aerobics instructor, just yep. as something <laughs> fun to do on the side. And I'm not laughing. I mean, Carrie, no, 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 she's, no. she's giggling, but she said, you think I do this? And I said, yes, you can. The only thing you'll need to learn is how to modify the movement for different people who have different limitations in right. class. So be prepared for that. And then when you started to think it through, you were like, you know, maybe at this point in my life, it's not really the right time for me to take on this new thing that I would have to learn. Maybe, maybe at a different time in my life, you know, but I didn't say, oh, Carrie, seriously, you've only really been exercising hard for three years. Do you yeah. honestly think that you could get in there and lead a class of women? Like, I would rather just light myself on fire than ever say that to somebody. Yeah, exactly. But just to bring up some obvious things. Yes, you can. Yes, you're strong enough. Yes, you have a good voice. Yes, you are a good communicator. Just a couple of things you're going to want to think ahead of so you don't feel ambushed by ladies in class that just can't bend that way. Yes, that was excellent. That was so supportive. I would, I just would never want to crush someone's dreams, oh, but no. you'd be a great in instructor. So uh, what you want to, so um, I had another example. Okay, here we go. I, I looked at my notes here. You want a good friend to be honest with you without being hurtful, like using the sandwich method. So here's an example. Um, I can see why you would feel this way. That is totally valid. But have you thought about it from this angle? Carrie does this to me all the time. She's so good at reaffirming because I, I have one way of looking at things. I don't have a good, I'm not good at looking at things at other angles. Um, and so Carrie's like, okay, I can completely see, um, you know, when we, Carrie and I talk about vaccinations a lot, we talk about, you know, she's an MSNRN, has a lot of experience uh, in the hospitals and in nursing and the medical field. I don't, I, I, you know, I have a tiny bit of experience but not nothing close to hers. And I really like when I talk with Carrie about things because Carrie, you never make me feel dumb. You said, I can understand why you would think that that's valid. And have you looked at it from this point of view? 
and I think that, and thank you for saying that. I just think it's really important that people feel heard and that even if their ideas are crazy, I was listening to, um, I was listening to speaking of vaccinations. I mean, I won't go into the political side, but I was listening to a governor who went around. It was the governor of Alabama. He went around and did the townhouse meetings and people were like, yeah, the government's killing us. And I was listening to this going, oh my gosh, like how did he handle it? And he's like, you're I hear you like just validating how they feel. So a good friend is going to validate how you feel and not make you feel ridiculous for the ideas or bringing up the, how you feel like, but they have to be honest with you. Like, it's like, I've said to uh, Christy and I've talked about the vaccination. I've been like, it's going to be hard to travel overseas without the vaccination, for instance. And that's me being honest with Christy, but not being like, you're crazy. That's ridiculous. Why would I treat her like that? Right. And I, a couple of times we've had upset clients with code red. If it's a really bad case, I will call them and I'll say, Hey, Karen, Christy code red here. And they're like, Oh, hi. And I'll say, Hey, listen, I heard about you being upset um, with what happened in the group. Uh, Can you just share your heart with me and talk to me? Just talk to me. Can you just tell me what happened and tell me what's going on and carry 10 out of 10 times to hundred percent of the time. It has turned out good when yes. I don't say anything and I just let them talk and to let them feel heard. That's all someone wants. They want someone to hear them. And it's important that your friend, a good friend, can hear you out without interrupting you and without trying to say something to make you feel dumb. Oh, this is 100% true. I love this point. And that's a great example. You do great with those calls. I'm going to start putting you on the customer service team. <laughs> please don't it takes you know what I have to actually pray before I do that because I'm naturally not good at that and so I always get I always like in my heart I, I get a little nervous yeah. uh, I don't much anymore because my confidence is much higher now but I before I make any of those sketchy phone calls I always say Lord I need you right now to put a watchman at the gate of my mouth I need you to soften my heart Because usually it's something they're accusing me of doing that I didn't do or something that I need you to soften my heart, soften their heart. And please let's let us just talk our way through this. And don't let me say anything stupid. Please just shut my mouth. And it that's and I that's the only way I can get through those phone calls or or a situation where I've got an upset, you know, VIP client or anything like that. How about a situation during an open forum Q&A in person during one of our events and someone says something that and man, I feel it coming up inside of me. I'm like, Christy, don't do that. Don't fly off the handle. That person that feels the way they feel. So really take a good, long, hard look at your friends. Are they treating you with kindness and respect or are they just pooping on you? You know, yeah. excellent how, point. How about a friend that does this? How about when you say this to your friend? Oh, I am so upset. Let's just order pizza. Uh. And it, does your friend say, you know what? That's not going to help you feel better. Instead, meet me for a, at the park for a walk. Yes. Oh, Christy and I have had many food conversations. Oh, man. Yeah. Time, Christy was so upset. I said, put down the crusty's pancake mix. Yes, exactly. I yeah. mean, people, Carrie knows I went through a phrase where I was eating. I would, I wanted crusty's pancakes when I was emotionally <laughs> know why it was crusty's like they're so it good wasn't Bisquick. It was crusty's and I get it because there are times when I have called, I have said to Christy, I'm so upset. I want to eat, but I'm telling you right now for accountability and just saying it makes allowed. You need to have someone that gets the journey you're on. If you are a code red rebel. And this is your journey. Your skinny, your friend does not have to be small. Your friend does not have to be losing weight. Your friend does not even have to be on board with the ideas of Code Red, but your friend needs to support you in what you're doing and help you. So even if they don't do it themselves, they have to say, no, let's, instead of margaritas, I'm going to bring you over a big bottle of water and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. 
or get, get get him out of the house. I know Carrie, yep. when I've called you, you said, listen, I totally get it that, that you want to go eat that. Uh, and, and believe me, I have been there myself, but that is going to make you feel worse. You're going to be mad at yourself tomorrow morning. You're going to be bloated. You're not going to feel good. So just, can you go for a walk and FaceTime me at the same time? Just yep. go grab a dog and go for a walk and FaceTime me. Just get yep. out of the kitchen. Can, is your friend steering you in the right direction or is your friend dialing dominoes for you? Yes. I'll have it delivered. I'll be over there in 10 minutes with a bottle of wine. Exactly. What? No, yeah. if that's what the kind of thing you've agreed to do, that's fine. But if you're on a journey and they know you're on a journey, they need to support you in that journey. Even if that means being a little tough on you at times or giving you the direct truth about that situation. It'd just be like if someone was a diabetic guys and they, they needed more insulin, if they were going to eat that Snickers bar and you're like, Oh, I'll bring it over. You know, that's not the journey they're on. You don't want to hurt them. Right. And we know it's going to hurt them. The more insulin that they give themselves, eventually those receptors are just going to be like yelling at someone with earmuffs on yep. if they're just not going to hear them. And you got to, it's, it's a mess. So I hope that this podcast helped you reevaluate the friends that you have. And hopefully these examples helped you say, Hey, you know what? I kind of recognize that, you know, Sally, Sally always says this, but Karen always says that. And, and, perhaps maybe weed out some people in your life that don't need to be there. Uh, you know, we don't want to cause you, we certainly don't want to cause you to have to be in fights with your friends and, and, you know, but sometimes you've got to, you know, you've got to put up some boundaries and you've got to clear some people out. And we talk about this during the 10 pound takedown. We talk about clean out your newsfeed and clean out your newsfeed is social media, but it also has to do with your friends. Uh, and who are you surrounding yourself with? Cause you are, you are going to be like the five people you hang around the most. I, and that's really powerful. We are a community. We are a tribe and mm -hmm. we need to be around each other. So I would really caution you, Carrie, and I want to really encourage you to take a good, long, hard look at the people that you are surrounded with. Cause I am astonished at some people that hang around other people. And I want to say, you call them friends. And the other thing is Christy, if you are around people, that cause you drama, that introduce drama into your life. I don't know if we said that specifically. Now you know, okay, now you know. So you can't be like, I didn't know what a good friend was. I was never shown a good friendship. Oh my gosh, la, 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 for keeping crap people around you. Now you know, you don't need drama. You don't. Christy brings zero drama to my life. I hope I don't bring drama to her life. <clears throat> you need a friend that loves you and supports you also, be a good friend, be a good friend, do these things for your friends. Mm -hmm. But if someone's bringing drama into your life and making it harder for you to get to your goals, you don't need people like that in your life. You really don't. And now you know what a real good, what a real friend looks like. Yeah. I'm going to brag on myself a second. When Kristen Sybil came home from Europe, I brought, uh, they, I had their door, I had their door code. <laughs> I had their door code and I put a big bouquet of flowers uh, on their kitchen table. And I put a sign that says, welcome home. I missed you so much. Now get some sleep. Love Christy. And then I put a big sign on their door that said, welcome home. And oh. I want them to feel loved. And I'm not saying that your friend has to do that. I just think that it's the little things. Are you doing little things for your friend as well, but are they doing little things back and, and, and evaluate, just evaluate, reevaluate a great place to a great place or a great way to get started with code red is definitely our 10 pound takedown challenge. We encourage you to get on the challenge. We talk about this and so many other things, uh, 10 pound takedown.com. I'll link it up below you guys. Thank you for listening to rebel weight loss and lifestyle. Have a good day and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening to this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you're not subscribed already, please be sure to do that right now. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you could do me a quick favor and rate and review this podcast. That would be just so helpful. Speaking of help, let me know if I can help you. Go to coderedlifestyle.com, check out my programs, and see what we can do for you. Until next time, Rebel on.